so that you can get a good grasp of what I'm talking about when I mention the term mind management, I think it's worth just having a look at how our brain has evolved over the centuries. Because there are lots and lots of examples, aren't there, of species that have evolved mentally and physically and adapted to their environment in order that they can survive and that they can thrive. Just look at how some species of fish are able to change colour in order to blend into the seabed, and how creatures have the power of sting to attack and to defend against larger creatures in their environment. How animals have been born with the ability, which is unique to them, to allow them to carry out complex mental processes in order to find and eat food and protect themselves. Of course, if a species doesn't evolve, then it dies. Let's have a look at a bit of science just for a minute. In the 1960s, the American physician and neuroscientist Dr. Paul McLean proposed a model of the evolution of the human brain, and he called it the triune brain. This model helps us to understand the basics of how we think and how we create our world. Essentially, McLean identified that the brain has evolved in three stages. The original part of our brain is the reptilian complex. This part of the brain is inherited from reptiles, and thus the label reptilian brain. When I say we've inherited it, we're actually talking millions and millions of years ago. Think for a moment about the world of a reptile. It was pretty basic, wasn't it? Eat or be eaten. We're talking about a brain at that time built for survival. This part of the brain helps us with our basic needs these days of breathing, maintaining our heartbeat and other vital functions. This reptilian part of our brain is responsible for our fight or flight response. Back in the day of the reptile, the reptile's brain helped them to survive by weighing up any situation and deciding whether they should first of all stand their ground and fight or save themselves by running off. And we know it now as an instinctual response. Then later, over the next couple of hundred millions of years, a second part of our brain evolved and this is called the limbic system. This part of the brain we inherited from mammals and it was originally responsible for the motivation and emotion involved in feeding, reproductive behaviour and parental behaviour. And this is now the home of our emotions and value judgments, deeply unconscious within us. You normally don't decide to get fearful, do you? It just happens, doesn't it? You don't sort of sit there and think, Oh, I know I'm going to get angry. Or I'm going to get scared. You just get angry or you get scared, don't you? The limbic system takes care of more complex processes than the reptilian complex. And these are the ones that are required to survive and thrive as mammals through evolution. Essentially, this part of the brain now fits snugly on top of the original reptilian brain. The third and final addition comes in the shape of our neocortex. And you'll be familiar with this part of the brain because this is the part that you use for doing your conscious thinking. We use it for planning, logic, working out solutions to problems 
and putting things in order and in sequence. This part of the brain fits on top of the limbic system, a bit like a bicycle helmet, and it's the bit that you generally see when you look at pictures of the brain, and you'll notice those gentle ripples that you see. Just simplifying this a bit then, the reptilian complex and the limbic system are the oldest parts of the brain, and they perform our unconscious functions. We're not aware of our breathing most of the time, are we? We don't have to breathe deliberately. Our unconscious reptilian brain does that for us. We don't deliberately heal our wounds consciously, do we? Our body produces the right chemicals and takes care of that for us, and that's the reptilian brain functioning. We're not consciously producing our emotions of anger, fear, sadness, hurt and guilt. They're unconsciously developed in our limbic system, and we become aware of them via our conscious thought processes. And the neocortex is the thing that's responsible for our conscious thought processes. This is the human part of our brain, and where, amongst other things, we identify a self-image. When we've got a problem to solve, we use this conscious part of the brain to run through the options and find the best solution. We're also able to think rationally in order to plan events for our future using this conscious process. Let's think about it then as a conscious mind and an unconscious mind, and they're working together to serve us, to allow us to survive to grow, to heal, to learn, to change, to protect us, to enable us to achieve our objectives, whatever we decide that our objectives are.